Assalamu alaikum, y'all. Uh, today's the first day of Ramadan for us Americans. I uh, wish everybody a blessed month this month, these next 30 days, Ramadan Mubarak. Um, a lot of people been in my inbox and my DMs um, asking me about Ramadan and what is it, what is it about, and Islam, just period. So I'm like, let me make a video. Um, the other videos I send people, you know, you know, that's, you know, uh, lectures from Arab scholars and whatnot, imams and such. And they get turned off because, you know, a lot of them speak Arabic and a lot of them use Arabic. Uh, terms and phrases and you know they a lot of them got a heavy Arabic accent so that turns them off so I figured I for the people that's accent I also hear from a mouth of you know a non Arab uh, especially somebody they could relate to you know what I'm saying a Negro an American Negro <laughs> you know but um yeah, Ramadan, basically, I'm going to start from the beginning, from the beginning, the beginning, beginning. I'm going to go back to the Bible, to the Torah, the Old Testament, the book of Genesis, chapter 21. Um, that's when Prophet Abraham, in Islam, we call him Ibrahim, peace be upon him. He had a wife named Sarah, and he had a handmaid named Hajar, and he had two sons by them. He had a son, his first son was Ishmael from Hajar, and after Sarah, when she had her baby, Isaac, when she had her son Isaac, um, you know, she had wanted Hajar and her son Ishmael to get out the household. So she prayed to the Most High God and he answered her prayer and he told the Holy Prophet Ibrahim to, peace be upon him, to uh, send away Hajar and her son Ishmael. And the Holy Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, he did as told. And he collected, you know, some dates and a couple of water skins or one water skin he filled up with water he took Hajar and Ishmael and they walked or rode a camel I don't know how they got there but they made their way they traveled all the way to um, the wilderness which today we call the valley of Becca or Mecca before it was called Mecca, it was called Bacca. It was a valley, an uncultivated, barren valley. No life, no signs of humanity, no signs of society. It was just an empty desert, an empty wilderness. And he left them there. He turned around. He walked away. And as he was walking away, his wife, uh, his wife Hajar, she, she asked him, like, Abraham. Where are you going? Where are you going? He kept walking, ignoring her. And then she asked him again. He kept walking and ignoring her. And then she asked him a third time. She finally, she finally thought, she finally thought about it. She was like, "Hey, did God tell you to do this?" And that's when Abraham stopped and he said yes. And then you know, Hajar, you know, she's so much of a righteous, pious woman. You know, her faith in God was so strong. She said, "Go ahead." Do what your God told you. I know he's going to be with me. I know he's going to take care of me and my son. So Abraham walked away. And left them there by themselves to survive on their own. So after the little bit of dates and a little bit of water that Hajar and Ishmael had, after that ran out, you know, they ain't, they ain't in the desert. So they getting ready to starve and dehydrate. They had no food, no water. So... Hajar, she panicking because she looked at her son Ishmael. He laying there on the ground, you know, getting ready to die of starvation and die of dehydration. 
So she ran up and down the uh, valley, the mountain valley, the mountain sides, the hills, the giant hills, looking around, you know, looking if she could see any signs of life, any signs of water, any signs of anything, any signs of help. She kept going back and forth seven times looking around and she couldn't find anything. So that's when she went back, she's, she went back to her son who's laying there and she just knew he was getting ready to die. And there was nothing she could do. The only thing she could do was pray. And, and she was crying out to the most high Lord God. She had he had sent down, he had sent down an angel. The Holy Spirit. Gabriel. In Islam, we call him Jabril. So he had sent down. Jabril and Jabril had told her basically like yo relax like you know what I'm saying God got you God got your son he gonna take care of everything and then he had took his wing the tip of his wing and he started he scratched the ground a little bit when he scratched the ground uh, water started gushing out water gushed out out of the middle of a desert in the middle of a hot desert, this Arabian desert, water came out the ground and started gushing out. So then when Hajar seen this, it was a miracle. Wow, water is appearing out the middle of the ground. So she had took her water skin, she filled it up with water, and she gave some to Ishmael. He drank some, he started feeling better. And she took some, the water just kept gushing out the ground. So she took some rocks and placed it around the water to stop it from gushing. And she made a little whale out of it. Uh, today we call that the Zam Zam whale. Because Zam Zam comes from the word Zom Zom, which means stop, stop. That's what Hadjar was saying as she was building the whale. She was saying stop, stop. She was telling the water to stop flowing. So after that, Ishmael and Hagar, you know, they had them a source of water to drink now. An unlimited source of the best water on earth. Pure, clean, alkaline water. Healing water. Given to them by God. He made water appear out the ground. That's how powerful he is. So it was just them two, Hagar and Ishmael. They were just sitting there, you know, chilling. And... As Abraham was making his way back home to Sarah, he had made a prayer to the Most High God. And his prayer was, he told God, he said, he had left some of his, some of his descendants in a barren, uncultivated valley. So, Lord, can you please incline the hearts of of some men to go to them with sustenance with fruits and other stuff that they could live off of so they won't be there by themselves so the most high God he answered Abraham's prayer peace be upon him and he sent some travelers to discover this lady and this boy by this well of water because they was traveling through the desert they had seen some birds flying over. You know, they was in the same position. They needed, hold on. They was in the same position. They needed some water because they was in the desert, obviously. they So once they seen birds flying through the air, they knew that water had, had to be nearby. So they went to the direction where they seen the birds flying. And lo and behold, they had found Ishmael and his mother by this well of water. And she asked Hadjar, can, he, can they get some of the water? And she said, sure, yeah, it's water for everybody. So they drank some water and they end up staying. So over time, more and more people started, more and more travelers, they came across this, this, this lady and her son by this well of water in the middle of a desert. And pretty soon a small village starting to form around this well. And after a while, you know, Ishmael, he had grew up, got married, had his own kids, and that's where he that's where he lived, in Arabia, in the wilderness. 
So after many years, the Holy Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, he had wanted to see Ishmael. He wanted to see what happened to his oldest son, his firstborn son, what became of him. So he told his wife, Sarah, that he's going to go out and leave and go back to where he dropped him off at and look for him and, you know, you know, reconnect with his son. He wanted to know what happened to his son. That's his son. He is father. Any father is going to love their son. Any father is going to be concerned about their son. So he had got up, went on a, got on a camel, and he traveled back down to where he dropped him off at, which was in the valley of Beckham. And he tried several times looking for his son Ishmael. After the third time, he finally ran into him. And, you know, they talked, they bonded, they reconnected. And the Holy Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, the only thing he was concerned about was how was his son worshiping who was his son worshiping you want to make sure his son is worshiping the god of the god abraham worship so god had instructed abraham to build a house that was going to be dedicated for prayer to the most high so abraham and ishmael they had built a simple square cube building and after they got finished building it they had made a prayer to the most high to accept this service from them and to make this place a place of gathering so that people can come and pray and become closer to the most high God and to sanctify that area and to make it a holy land a holy city and the most high God he listened to the holy prophet Ibrahim and he accepted his prayer and also what Abraham did was he prayed that the people the descendants of Ishmael and the people of that city he prayed that the Most High sent them their own messenger of their own from amongst them. He wanted them to get their own messenger to instruct them, to teach them the book, to teach them righteousness, to teach them the laws of God and correct them. So let's fast forward hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years later. The people of Mecca, which that city grew to become, Mecca, which we call today. The Arabs that live around there, they became pagan. They started worshiping all these idols, hundreds and hundreds of idols. They put hundreds and hundreds of idols around this square building, this cute building. Today we call the Kaaba, the house of worship, the house of prayer. So basically they disrespected the house that Abraham had built and put all these false idols and graven images around there and worshiping them and worshiping everything except the God of Abraham. And not only were they idolaters, they had became corrupt people, murderers. They was always at war with each other. The different families that lived in Mecca, they was always at war killing each other. They was always doing corrupt things. They were just savages, savage, wild Arab. But it was one man, as a boy, he was an orphan. His mom and his father had died when he was a boy. And he had grew up. And he was known around the city for being honest, having good character, being, being wise, having wisdom. Even as a young boy, he was known. That's what he was known for. His name was Muhammad, peace be upon him. And Muhammad, he was not an idol worshiper. He didn't agree with his people, with the people of Mecca. He didn't agree with it. He didn't want to be around all the corrupt, all the corruption. He didn't want to be around all that, the, the, the evil, that the evil lifestyle the pagan Arabs was living. 
So he used to, he wanted to get away from that city. He didn't want to be around that. So he used to get away. He used to walk a couple miles, a few miles to a nearby mountain. And he used to chill in his cave. And there, when he was there, he used to pray and meditate and, and you know, seclude himself. And so one day, that's when the Most High God this answered Abraham's prayer of sending the people of Mecca a messenger of their own. So during the month of Ramadan, on the night of power, that's when the Most High God, he had ordered the Holy Spirit, the Archangel Jabril, Gabriel, he had ordered him to go down to Muhammad, peace be upon him, while he was in the cave, to give him a revelation. And today we call that revelation the Quran, which means to recite the, rec the recitation. And he told, when the angel went down to the cave and, Prophet, and he appeared to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He had told him to read these verses of the Quran. And Prophet Muhammad, he couldn't read because he never went to school. So he didn't know how to read or write. So he responded to the angel, I don't know how to read. Like, why are you trying to make me read? I can't read. So the angel ordered him several times to read until eventually the angel recited verses to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And that's when the Holy Prophet started reciting these verses that he heard from the angel Gabriel and Jabril. So once he heard, once he seen what happened, he was shocked, obviously. He was scared, like anybody else would be. Like, if anybody else seen an angel appear to him, they didn't know what it was, you'll be scared too. But after experiencing that, he went home to his wife and told her what happened. And his wife said, That's that sound like that sound like an angel from God, the same God that was sent to Moses. Like you're a prophet, you're a messenger, like God's chosen you. So she encouraged him and and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he would he would recite these verses that he would get from the holy angel Jabril and Jabril would visit him periodically every now and then to recite a new verse a new chapter to recite a new chapter to the holy prophet and the holy prophet would go back to his family and and tell him what the new revelation he just got he, he would recite it to him so then pretty much after that the the leaders of Mecca the pagan families the tribes the head families the rich and powerful families they didn't want to hear all that they didn't want to hear about no worship of this unseen one God and all that because their thing was worshiping idols and they was making money off that and then so then they just like all prophets of the past they had hated Prophet Muhammad and they had tried to kill him and they had chased him out the city. So Prophet Muhammad, he had fled and went to another city in Arabia called Medina. Today we call it Medina, Medina. Back then it was called Yathrib. But I'm gonna say Medina for the remainder of this topic. So anyway, while he was in, when he was in uh, Medina, he would recite the Quran to the people of Medina and they would listen and they would follow him and, and, the, and the pagan Arabs of Mecca they were saying assassins and all types of armies to go kill and go to war with Prophet Muhammad because they felt like they was losing their power because more and more people were converting to they, they, they was worshipping one God the God of Abraham. So, 
So, make a long story short, Prophet Muhammad, he finally raised up 10,000 men. And then that's when he was ordered to go back to Mecca with this, with this 10,000 army. And when he went back to Mecca, that's when they took over. And Prophet Muhammad, he had destroyed the hundreds and hundreds of idols that was that they put around this house of worship, the Kaaba. And then he had reestablished it for the original purpose that the Kaaba was built for, which was, the, which was the worship of one God, the God of Abraham, the Holy Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him. And ever since then, that's what that's what um, that's Islam right there. And Prophet Muhammad he recited he had a lot of followers and Islam spread because people heard this word, this recital, this beautiful recital from God coming out the mouth of a man who couldn't read, so he couldn't have written it himself, or he couldn't have read about these stories of the old prophets. He, he couldn't have read about it because he couldn't read. So to hear him reciting such a beautiful, well put together verses and scriptures, it was a miracle in itself. How could an unlearned, uneducated man come up with this on his own? Which he didn't. So that's a little bit of story of Islam. And Islam means to obey God, to surrender, to submit to God. And Muslim means one who submits to God, one who obeys and surrenders to God. And God, that's an English word. Uh, the English language has only been in existence for about 1400 years. And back then, they didn't speak English, obviously. They spoke a Middle Eastern language where all the other prophets were born in the Middle East. They spoke a Semitic language, and specifically, they spoke Arabic. And in most Semitic languages, in most Middle, e Middle Eastern languages, such as Arabic, the word for God is Allah. Allah. Subhanahu wa the most high. And Allah means the creator, the God, the one God, the same God that created Adam, Moses, Noah, and Prophet Ibrahim, and Jesus. And I created me, and I created you. So that is what Islam is, and that is who Allah is, and that Allah is an Arabic term for the Creator, the God, the Most High. And there's only one. So I hope all everybody out there have a blessed Ramadan. Yeah. Shukran for listening. Thank you for listening. Uh, you got any more questions? Send me up.